The question we've got here is to calculate 5.7 multiplied by 2. So that's 2 times 5.7. It's always a good idea with decimals to, to estimate first. So 5.7 is roughly 6, isn't it? So this sum is roughly 6 times 2, which is 12. So our answer should be a little bit less than 12. Let's see if we get it right. So we've got 5.7. times 2. When you're doing decimal multiplication, just ignore the points. Don't make the mistake that lots of people make and put the point in the answer below the point where it is in the question. That doesn't work. You won't get it right if you do that. So, do 2 times 7 is 14. And then 2 times 5 is 10, but we've carried 1, so that makes 11. Okay, then we need to decide where to put the point. So we said before, if you remember, the answer is going to be roughly 12. So we can see that the sensible answer is 11.4. Okay, another way to work it out is to count in your question how many numbers there are after the point. So in the 5.7, the, the 7 is after the point, so that's one number. The 2 hasn't got any numbers after the point. So there is only one number after the point in total. So there must be one number after the point in the answer. So that's why 11.4 is the correct answer. So here's a much more difficult decimal multiplication. We've got 3.21 multiplied by 1.2. Again, it's a very good idea to do an approximation first. This sum is roughly 3 times 1. And we all know 3 times 1 is 3, so our answer should be a bit bigger than 3. Let's see if that's what we get. So we've got 3.21, and we're multiplying it by 1.2. Just ignore the decimal points. So think of the sum as 321 times 12. Okay, so start multiplying on the right hand side. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. We're moving on to the next column. So put a 0 first. And then 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Then we need to add these two answers. So 2 and 0 is 2. 4 and 1 is 5. 6 and 2 is 8. And 3 is 3. OK, so remember, we're expecting an answer that is roughly 3. We know it's going to be more than 3 because to get 3 times 1, we rounded both the numbers down. So our answer must be 3.825, wasn't it? Let's check that by counting the decimal places. In 3.21, there are two numbers that are after the point. And in the 1.2, there is one number that's after the point. So altogether, there are three numbers that are after the point in the question. So there's got to be one, two, three numbers after the point in the answer. That's why the point goes between the 3 and the 8. So 3.21 times 1.2 gives us 3.852. Find the cost of 0 0.8 kilograms of porridge oats, costing 0 0.85 pounds per kilogram. Would 0 0.8 kilograms cost more or less than 85p? And then find the exact cost. OK, so let's think about this question A first. To find the cost of 0 0.8 kilograms, we'd have to multiply 0 0.8 by 85p. Lots of people have got the misconception that when you multiply two numbers together, the answer always gets bigger. That's not true, is it? Because 0 0.8 is less than 1. 
So we're multiplying a number, in effect, by a fraction. It's eight-tenths. It's less than one. So the answer must be less than 85p, mustn't it? So the answer to A is less. So we've got to find the exact cost. So we're expecting it to be less than 85. So we're going to work out 0 0.8 times 85. Okay. Just ignore the points and work out the sums first. So we've got 8 times 5. 8 fives are 40. 8 times 8 is 64, but we've carried 4, so that's 68. And 8 times 0 is 0, so we think we just carry the 6 and put the answer in. OK, so where does the point go? Remember, we're expecting an answer that is less than 85. So if we're talking about pounds, the point must go there no pounds and 68 pence or we could just say that equals 68p so the exact cost of 0.8 kilograms of porridge oats is 68p